Hi guys, Ian Johnson from driversuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about uh, manufacturing cycle times in terms of benchmarking with cycle times. We're going to take a look at mean mode and median cycle time analysis. Now uh, a lot of guys are, are uh, a lot of companies, a lot of my customers are somewhat uh, surprised when I start talking about uh, three methods of calculating average or the average cycle time. Um, most of us or most of my customers are just used to the standard and straightforward way of adding up all inside the sample portion and dividing by the number of operations. Um, but what you want to do with this is when it comes to analyzing cycle times in an individual work cell, you actually want to get to the point where you're analyzing the ideal cycle time. Okay? And when you benchmark your cycle times, it's all about identifying the best cycle time in your workstation. And it's not about, you know, attaining that cycle time each and every single time, but it's about trying to get that cycle time as often as possible, okay? Um, so to give you guys an example, I've covered a couple of subject matters and you know, um, some, are, some of the uh, content that I've done before. I've talked about manufacturing productivity rates for um, various work cells. I've talked about um, uh, production workstation prototyping or setting up the perfect workstation. So this goes along with the same theme where you're analyzing cycle times as it happens, okay? So I'm going to just go over the three options in terms of calculating average. Um, and this actually came from a project I finished recently where I actually did, uh, actually did 20 samples of cycle times um, in this one particular workstation three times a day over a period of a week and a half. Um, but I'll give you an example of how the mean is calculated. Now the mean is, is as we all know, is what we all associate as average, okay? So in this case, I took 10 cycle times. Um, this is one half of the sample portion that I did. And the first cycle time was 2.3, then it was 2.3, then 2.25, 2.3, 2.45. This is minutes and then seconds, 2 minutes and 55 seconds, 2 minutes, 15 seconds. Here's a high cycle time of 325. The individual had some issues with the bill of materials here. Uh, 3.30 uh, had another issue with a uh, small issue with the bill of materials, unclear, and then went down to 2.15. So when you calculate mean, it's your standard calculation of average. You add up all of these individual operations and their cycle times. You come up with 25 and you divide it by the number of operations that were done. In this case, we took 10 cycle times, 5 and 5. So it's 25, it's 2.3, 2.3, 2.25. All these numbers added together gives you 25, divided by the number of operations, which is 10, and that would give you um, 2 minutes and 50 seconds as an average cycle time, okay? Um, so in this case, it's 2 minutes and 50 seconds as an average cycle time, and that's the mean. That's the, what we know is average. Now, the mode cycle time is basically uh, the time that occurs the most frequently inside of the sample portion. Um, in this particular one, we're talking about 10 sample portions. So what you're trying to do there with the mode cycle time uh, is you're trying to find the one time that occurs the most frequently. Okay, so if you look across this sample, the one that occurs the most frequently is the 2.3. It occurs once, twice, and three times. And nothing else occurs more than once or twice. And the 2.3 occurs the most often. So three sample times, the mode time is 2.3. Okay? The median is where you take all of the sample portions, which is n. In this case, we did 10. So it is 10 plus 1, which would be 11, divided by 2, which means it's 5.5. Now, this is not the answer. It's not 5 minutes and 50 seconds. What it says is, is that you take this 5.5 number and you track it down inside of your sample portion in order to find the cycle time that correlates to the to the one that's in between the fifth and the sixth place. So if you go one, two, three, four, five, it's in between 245 and 255. So we'll say the median time is, let's say, 247. Okay? So you have three ways of calculating average. Mean, take all your sample portions, add them up. You get 25 divided by the number of operations, 10 gives you 2.5. Mode is the one that occurs the most frequently, 2.3 occurs the most frequently in this sequence. And the median is you take the number of operations, plus 1 divided by 2 gives you 5.5. Locate the, the uh, operation in between 
5 and 6, you know, right around here, so you're looking at about 2.47, I've kind of guesstimated here. Um, but the purpose of this is to say, you know, when I do a project with a, with a customer of mine, what I like to tell them is your mode cycle time should be your benchmark cycle time. And they've always wondered why. And the reason it is, is because your mean can be skewed by high or low averages. Okay? So basically, for the most part, this can be driven up or down by, you know, infrequently high cycle times that, that aren't terribly accurate. But the mode cycle time is the one that occurs the most often in the sequence. And in this particular project, this is one half of the sample portion on one day. But this 2.3 was actually the most prevalent cycle time in manufacturing. And if this, production, if this particular production work cell got 2.3 cycle time on each and every one of its operations in terms of working operations, it would have saved the company a substantial amount of money. So what we did was we based this 2.3 as our benchmark cycle time. Because it's the one cycle time that occurs the most frequently. And it happened to be the one cycle time that had the least amount of downtime, the least amount of work stoppages, the least amount of issues. We based everything off of that 2.3, and we backtracked our analysis in order to find out why certain cycle times were higher than this 2.3. Now, again, the purpose here is not to get 2.3 every single time, because work stoppages are common in manufacturing. They're going to occur. But what you want to do is you want to find out what your mode cycle time is over several, um, op, uh, several sample portions that you're doing. And you want to get as close to that mode cycle time as you can. Now, if, if that's all you do, then you will increase your production throughput. So that's it. That's the difference between mean, mode, and median cycle times. If you want to check out more, go to uh, drivesuccess.com. Thank you very much.